sign the song request, you know. Hey Majors, so I'd like to start off with a little biology lesson. When a species finds itself living on an island, it can start to evolve in strange ways based on the different pressures applied by the new environment. This is called island syndrome, and while it can manifest in a lot of ways, the biggest driving force is often a lack of predators. They force example, them you should the try play and kill to fly me. Since there was nothing to flee from, the saint killed a field yeah. mouse got twice as big since it no longer had to hide. And with that. no one around to bully them, the Sardinians started putting maggots in their cheese. Meet Kazumartsu, literal translation, rotten cheese. It's made by taking a perfectly good wheel of pecorino and letting a special type of fly lay eggs in it. The fly babies then work to partially digest the cheese, rendering it goopy and wet and maybe quite tasty and worm-filled. Now, cheese as a concept is already quite suspect. It's clotted milk that you fill with bacteria and mold and let sit for a while. But cheese is safe and delicious. Cheese is my friend. I trust cheese. So my guard would be down around Kazumartsu. I've learned to look past a cheese's childhood. Strange upbringings are what give them their character. But it turns out, those maggots are still alive, and if you don't chew well enough, they can cause enteric myiasis, which is a fancy term for fly larvae living in your intestines. Symptoms are similar to food poisoning, except with the added psychic pain of knowing that, again, your bowels are full of squiggly new friends. It's for this reason that Kazumartsu is banned in the EU and elsewhere. A black market still exists, which is wild, and it's not a small one. In 2019, the illicit Kazumartsu trade was estimated to be worth 2 to 3 million euros annually. Personally, I would just do a prohibition style, like definitely don't put these fly eggs on this sumptuous wheel of pecorino. But if you do, you absolutely shouldn't keep it warm and damp for a week. But although it's traditional to leave the larvae alive when you eat your mag and cheese, some consumers still prefer them dead, shockingly. In that case, one puts the cheese in a sealed bag, and when the maggots run out of oxygen, they writhe around and fling themselves all over the place. This is heard as a distinct pitter-patter against the walls of the bag, and when the sound stops, the contents are ready to eat like popcorn. Shark fin soup is one most of us have heard about already, God, mostly dude. in reference to its effect on shark populations and the wastefulness that goes into making it. Until recently, though, I never looked into the nature of the dish itself. I figured, right, the fins are just the only part of the shark worth eating. Big whoop. It's probably not much to- What? People eat shark all the time. Different from, like, swordfish. Apparently, right. though, I had it backwards. Shark fins aren't even meat. They're made almost entirely of cartilage and collagen. They are the last part we should be eating. That's why it's only made into soup, because without being soaked in broth, it has zero flavor or nutritional value on its own. Their only redeeming quality is their unique mouthfeel due to how stringily the collagen grows, in structures called serratotrichia. The texture has been described as somewhere between chewy and crunchy, which I find describes most things, actually. Other adjectives is present on Wikipedia include snappy, gelatinous, and sinewy. The exact sensation of eating this substance remains a mystery to me, and the unintended side effect of all this research is that I now really want to try it. Like, it's a big trade. I've got to be the one that's wrong. There is imitation shark fin soup available, but I've already decided that it's not nearly as good, so I've come up with a compromise to this controversy. Everyone on Earth gets just one bite. Say there's 10 bites to a fin, 4 fins to a shark, 200 million sharks die, sure, a necessary casualty, but then we can end the practice forever. All done. You can finally rest, Mr. Ming. Come here, baby. Aww. Aki. What? Aki. Where? Aki. The Aki is a fruit originally from West Africa, which is most commonly associated with Jamaican cuisine, where it appears in such dishes as Aki and saltfish. These alien kidneys here are called the arils, and they're the only part of the fruit that's actually eaten. The flavor is on the savory side, being described as kind of nutty or bean-like. What makes the Aki controversial, though, is the effects it can cause when prepared improperly. If the arils are allowed to completely ripen, they're harmless. But if you eat them too early, or don't thoroughly clean off all the non-aril stuff, they can cause Jamaican vomiting sickness. This this disease doesn't sound real, it sounds like it belongs next to eastern sweats and tangerian bone grindings, but that's actually an official term, and as for symptoms, it does what it says on the tin. Plus maybe death. While Aki based products aren't outright illegal in the United States. Alright. Hey, not in cream with even five gifted man. Congratulations to the lucky winners. And this